now that we've looked at the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, one of the things that Niels Bohr figured out was um, that these particular waves uh, gave us some indication of what's going on with the electrons inside the atoms. And he came up with this idea of what are called print, uh, quantum numbers. And so his quantum numbers are a description of what's going on inside the atom uh, with the electrons. Um, the first one, if we look at the principal quantum number, principal quantum number simply represents um, at what energy level. Are we at the first energy level? Do we go to the second, the third, and so on? And so that's simply an indication of how far out on the atom we are. The angular momentum uh, is a description of what happens inside of each energy level, whether there's um, some subshells on the, inside those energy levels. And then last but not least, we have this magnetic quantum number, or magnetic quantum number, which is the orbitals or the shapes of the orbit or the that exist inside the subshells. And then last but not least, we have the, the quantum spin or the electrons actually uh, are spinning in opposite directions when they're in an orbital together. And so these these things, we're going to start talking about what these are. And um, the easiest way to think about this, they're simply a zip code for a location of an electron. And so when we get in here first, n, which is the principal quantum number, describes the energy level or the shell. It, it actually tells us, okay, if I look down here at this bottom number, one, it's in the first energy level. It's in a zero subshell. And, and that's just an indication. It's not telling us the quantity. It's just telling us a position. Uh, ML, so it's uh, its orbital is the zero orbital, and this electron is spinning with a plus one half spin. So electrons can spin with positive or um, negative um, spins, and they're always one half. So as we go down through this and start to look at this, so we have this um, first energy level, a zero subshell, a zero orbital, and I'm spinning with a plus one half spin. Okay. This is the description of quantum numbers. So if I'm in the first energy level, so that means that guy right there, there is one subshell, and that's the zero subshell. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the zero subshell, and it has one orbital. It's called the zero orbital, and it has a possibility of a plus one-half spin and a minus one-half spin. So we have a total of two electrons that can exist there. Now we jump to the second energy level. We have two subshells. We call it the zero and the one subshell. So if you notice as we go down to each energy level, each n value, that there's always, it always starts with a zero. So the subshells always start with this simplest subshell. And in a, in a zero subshell, you have one orbital called the zero orbital. In a one subshell, you have three orbitals. One of them is called negative one, zero and one. And in each of those, you have each one of these orbitals you have a plus one half minus one half. This would have a plus one half minus one half plus one half minus one half and so on. So you notice that if you have one orbital, you have two electrons. If you have three orbitals, you have six electrons. And you'll notice that pattern kind of continues down. And so L is always uh, zero to um, one less than the energy level. And then the sub or the orbitals are always um, from negative whatever the subshell is to positive. In other words, if this is one, then it's negative one, zero, one. If it's two, it's negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. And if you notice, we have one orbital, we have three orbitals, so six electrons, and now we have five orbitals, and so we get a total of 10 electrons. And so Bohr came up with um, this idea of quantitizing or giving a description for the location of electrons. And um, what we're going to do is, you guys will experiment with this a little more, but what it leads to is understanding what those orbitals start, start to look like. And so a zero orbital, if we look at this first thing, these are zero orbitals. Whether they're a one zero orbital, a two zero orbital, a three zero orbital, in other words, n is one, two, or three, but the L value is zero, 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 okay? So that is a uh, zero subshell and also a zero orbital. So we could do this, zero, zero, zero. 
Okay, so that describes what's going on with an S. And so when we see this arrangement, that actually indicates for our for our sake, we're going to say that's a 1S and this is a 2S. And this guy would be a 3S. And, and now as we look down here, here's our, our P orbitals, which would indicate a minus 1, a 0, and a 1. So here's what we have is in the first energy level we don't have any P's so we have to start in the second so we go 2, 1, 1 indicates that we have P subshells and you could say negative 1 you'd go 2, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1 so that those are the orbital or the quantum numbers for this would be a P um, this would be 2P and actually we could say 2p1 because there's one electron and then um, if we could actually have uh, two electrons there and so we could say 2p and there's two electrons in here so we have a total of a possibility of 2p4 and here we could have actually 2p6 and so a total of those six electrons down here we have the d's and this would be minus 2 minus 1 0 1 and 2 so that indicates those uh, those orbital shapes based on these quantum numbers that we've talked about. So when I start to talk about an s orbital, um, we're talking about this ball shape. When I start to talk about a p, there's these two regions where the electrons live. If I talk about d's, only two electrons exist in here, but they can exist in any of those four lobes and so on. So if we look at the d's, we have five orbitals, so we have a possibility of ten electrons. Now, as we move on, when we start to look at these electrons, we, we kind of have to figure out atoms start to build from the bottom up. They, they start out at the very bottom, and so they start at the 1s, and they put one electron in there. And, and actually, this could be hydrogen, because hydrogen tends to have, well, it has one proton, and if we put one electron in, we have one electron orbiting around the outside of hydrogen. If we uh, put a second electron, whoop put a second electron, you'll notice we filled up that first energy level, that s orbital, and we have two electrons. This would be, we could say, helium. And if we move on, we go to uh, three electrons, and notice the next electron has to jump up into the 2s, 2s orbital um, and subshell. And so what happens is we get this one electron out in the next energy level. We put another electron in there. Now notice that we have these arrows going opposite directions. This first arrow is that little plus one half, and the second energy is a minus one half. And the gentleman who made that it talked about that in uh, uh, the way things are arranged is actually Pauli. And Pauli said that no two electrons can have the same quantum numbers. So if we describe the quantum numbers of these two electrons, it would be two zero zero plus one half, and then two zero zero minus one half. They both can't spin the same direction. And so basically, Pauli said, you know, if we have two electrons in the same orbital, they can't go the same direction. So we keep moving on. We put another one. Now it jumps to the 2p. And as we start to move across, these energy or these orbitals all have same equal energy. And so those electrons are jumping to the next. They don't want to pair up until they have to. And so this rule of filling equal energy orbitals is called Hund's rule. And Hund's rule says that we have to fill each one of these half full before we can pair them up. And so as we move on, there's, there's that third electron. Now the next electron has to go in and pair up and have that one half spin, minus one half spin. And we keep working our way up. Okay. So when we start to, we'll, we'll actually get into this uh, electron arrangement in the next video. We just wanted to talk about, first of all, the quantum numbers and start to talk about some of the arrangement of the electrons within um, the atom. We will start the next video with this electron arrangement and orbital diagram.